Me and Asbor take it, bro. Let's go. Ugh, the motorway's chock-a-block tonight. Man, Davo's a hard case. Yeah, nah, sweet as. Oh yeah, I sank a slab of piss on Saddy. I was on the rark. Hey, yo, can I yoza up your anuk, G? You know I can't have any of your ghost chips. Uh, neck minute. Keen to go havies on a tinny cuz? Go on, give us a hoon. What is up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Jade, and you just said you couldn't hear that, Simon? Yes, I couldn't really hear that. Uh, it was pretty quiet for me, sorry. Oh, uh, okay. It, it was just a TikTok meme. I'll send it to you later. It was... I'm pretty sure you've seen it, though. Everybody would have at this point. It was, it was the American girl um, trying to... Uh, impersonate kiwi slang i'm sure you've seen that one please tell me you have oh probably um uh, I, that looked familiar but like <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't i couldn't i couldn't remember what she was saying it was my I bad with the audio issues anyway what's up ladies and gentlemen of the internet my name is jade and this is this is episode 15 of the heroes what we know podcast i'm joined today by Hannah and Simon, my esteemed co-hosts. Uh, Simon, we'll start with you. What's the latest? Uh, well, I think it's a bit of a trend these days. I come here on a Sunday evening, uh, tail between my legs after throwing a couple terrible punts <laughs> down at the TAB on some um, on some fighting, and uh, it's happened again today it was the last major card of the year for the ufc chucked a few bets down today and have come away with nothing so far so unfortunately today was not my day and we were we were saying right before the show right simon you you know as long as it's a moderation and what what they say about bread and circuses right it's it's what you need to be able to get through tough times Totally, that's right. <laughs> as long as you give the peasants their bread and circuses, they can uh, they can survive yeah, the most bleak times. But good to see you, Simon. I, I, I've i got mixed emotions about this episode, obviously. Um, with it being the last for us for the calendar year, I, I feel like I'm missing it already, but also uh, looking forward to a break. I definitely echo your sentiments. It is, um, it is so close to the just the end of uh, everything for me for this year, where I can truly kind of relax and, yeah, it definitely feels like I'm almost there. So that anticipation is quite high at the moment. Awesome, and of course, my good friend and lovely assistant Hannah, who's never more than arms arms length away to. Fulfill my every need. Well, not every. <laughs> Sh I shouldn't have said that. But, but Hannah, how are you? Great, thanks. And I just have to say, I agree. It's it's a bit of, um, you know, wait and see. I think a lot of people are questioning the environment, especially with COVID now, and how what that really means for celebrating um, this year. And it's been also really interesting to, um, kind of following on from my, my story a couple of weeks ago, um, highlighting about um, Freedom Day, um, well that was last week, um, is the fact that suddenly all these uh, businesses have cancelled their Christmas parties because yep. a couple yep. of people aren't vaccinated yep if, so if, very cool if a if a company can't guarantee a hundred percent of the attendees are going to be vaccinated the um right at the moment restaurants and uh bistros have a responsibility to cancel the whole thing yep. um that that sounds like a bad thing uh but for me simon it's kind of a reflection of of bad policy what do you think totally because um if you were to if you were to be rational about it most of those situations could have gone ahead without minimal sort of 
issue of, or you know any potentially yeah. um, so the fact you know the fact that they haven't gone ahead because of the 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 vaccine policy just yeah doesn't make sense to me that's that's my litmus test for all of the stuff is yeah does the does the policy create situations that look natural and should happen or does it mm-hmm. restrict that that and and the, and you know what we're working with it now definitely isn't that uh, i'm pleased to say that today um the majority of the show is actually not um going to be about covid very, very happy about that but um uh, Simon, before we move into the question of the day, I, I did just want to get your off-the-top thoughts about recent revelations that the uh, Director General of Health, Mr. Ashley Bloomfield, or Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, actually indicated in government documents that the uh, vaccine pass was not required uh, from for restaurants and most uh, eateries such as that. What what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot of places that have just taken it upon themselves to enforce uh, vaccine, uh, what do you call your vaccine passports, uh, even though it's not required. Mm. Um, you know, lots of people are overextending what the law is supposed to be like. They're just taking it upon themselves to enforce it and to to push people out. Uh, Simon, I just want to check in with you. We're, we're having trouble with your picture. Have you got more devices on than usual? No, or? no, no I've, I've, I've actually got everything turned off. Yeah, no, I uh, just looks saw better that. Now. It's come back, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all good. I think it's just a short-term thing. Okay, without further ado, like this is, I must say, that this is probably apart from hanging out with you guys which is obviously the feature of this podcast for me the question of the day would be where i get probably 80 percent of my thrills uh for, <laughs> for this podcast so if you allow me to i'd love to share this week's so what would you mandate if you were given the authority what would you mandate if you were given the authority? Now, Simon, I'm I'm happy if you demand that I go first. If it helps. No, I got I've got my answer. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um. I kind of want to like. I don't know if it's a bit of a cop out, but like, for me, I would mandate. Uh, a healthy lifestyle you know i would mandate uh people have to to consume certain certain foods throughout the week have to commit to certain amounts of exercise um and to pick up certain habits like uh, good sleep maybe meditation or journaling as well i try and mandate um some some habits that would that would most likely lead to, to better rounded individuals and hopefully that might help all of us the most yeah so as much as i do as much as i kind of oppose mandating things because i am quite strongly uh believing and in, in behind free choice and, and the freedom to make up your mind and do things but if i was to mandate something that's probably what i'd go for awesome so Simon wants us all to pursue a, the life of a Buddha. So Hannah, not quite, not quite, not quite. No, not I'm, quite. More, I, I'm more, I'm more <laughs> idealized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just to just to kind of yeah, remove the sort of breed and circus, uh, uh, luxury things that we indulge in. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hannah, what would you mandate if you were given the authority? So I definitely agree with Simon too. I think it should be um, mandate shouldn't exist, and it should be more about <laughs> pro-choice and freedoms. But if I had to mandate something, uh, I would probably think about universal access. Now, 
Um, I think Ooh. about things like disability bathrooms are so hard to find and you know parents get put in disability bathroom um, that ends up being the parents room also it's so hard to find a disability um, mm. room in a hotel what if it was mandated that every room had to be a disability bath disability access room so there was no disability access and there was no question about going to hotels then mm. um, and then you know kind of looking at it on the other side now the government's been put it this is my other this is my second thing i'd probably mandate you want two um <laughs> i'm gonna put two today just because this this is on the opposite side so the government's been putting all that trying to tell us what to do and put these mandates on us i'd love the opportunity to put a mandate on the government and have a requirement for them to actually employ um disabled people in roles that actually were valid roles and they actually invested in in actually um, their training and their skills and the growth of disabled people not just saying that disabled people don't have the skills so no we we won't be putting disabled mm, people forward that is a very meta response Hannah almost <laughs> Almost like you've been following me around this week. <laughs> and of course you have. But uh, thank you for that, Hannah. And uh, for me, very similar to Hannah's response, slightly different slant, Simon. I would mandate for much smaller restricted government. No, um, I, think that'd be, I think that'd be quite, quite handy. Yeah. I remember a time where the... The phrase used to be governments don't intervene in issues of public health. Whether I'm, I'm from an alternate universe or something, I don't know. But I remember a time where experts were experts. And there was no such thing as the government overruling expert advice to get their kicks out of what they want to achieve yeah. uh, for their policy. There, were, there was no such thing as that. No, I mean, I th I'm pretty sure that we were supposed to go off the guidance of the public health officials that are in place, not the ones that are elected, but it definitely has been proven quite recently just how much um, what's happened so far has been guided by the politicians we, mm. we elect who um, I'm quite confident don't have the medical background to, mm. to make the best decisions. You know, most of those MPs that come in through the election have backgrounds in law and and business not not medical health you and know bar a few you, you know what sticks out for me is that the director general wanted the border around Auckland to cease as soon as Auckland got to 90% and, mm. and, I, and I believe based on the numbers given to me that we've done that Yep. Is that I mean, what you understand? Well, yeah, that's what they say on the <laughs> TV. That yeah, that we yeah. definitely reached that target. But yeah. yeah, I mean, they they said that well, we have to wait a little bit longer before we can get out. Yeah, but a little bit longer. Thanks, guys, for playing the question of the week. I I really do enjoy that. As I said, that's one of my favorite bits, and I get to run it for the most part. So he <laughs> he for me. Um, <laughs> But um, without further ado, uh, we are going to get into the uh, first story of the day, and I'm just going to work. I'm just going to work in order that you posted, if that's all right, um, Simon. That's exact. Yep, that's how I would would like it. Yes, please. Uh, okay, so just bear with me two seconds, and the floor is yours, Mr. Anderson. Okay, can you just scroll down a little tiny bit to the, and so that employment insurance is at the top. Right, yeah, oh, yeah, there, perfect. So this is the ACT uh, Party's welfare policy from their page, and it talks about um, the benefit and, and just how many people 
are on the benefit and then they talk and then it says there about one of the worst impacts is on children and it gives us that about one of every 10 children is born onto an existing benefit and one in five babies is living in a benefit-led household by their first birthday it says these children face a bleaker future than children born to parents and work they face worse outcomes on nearly every social indicator this is often intergenerational scenario is an ongoing low social moving low moving social disaster for our country so that, that that part of their and then part of their policy is is to address that fact that they don't actually talk about I'd re, tr, I I had a look through it and none of their policy says we're going to limit the number of babies on the benefit or anything like that it, all it talks about is that um, it's not the best thing for for babies to be born on the benefit it, and they point to the the stats around the outcomes and the social indicators for p children born on the benefit now if you could just go to the um the news hub article please sure thing yeah so the title says uh act act party boycotts uh rnz morning report caused by host comparing one of its policies to eugenics and that is um that is that policy we just looked at and it says here, so the remark was made by host Susie Ferguson in a discussion about Axe proposed changes to welfare ahead of last year's general election, prompting a complaint from the Broadcast Standards Authority and the party's director of communications, Rachel Bond. Uh, during October uh, 2nd on 2020, uh, about children living in poverty, Ferguson asked Axe Nicole McKee why the party argued the country couldn't continue to have so many children born to a benefit. Does that not smack of eugenics? Ferguson asked. So this article talks about you don't need to keep going on, um, but I guess oh, so I guess the, the, the definition here: the term eugenics refers to the selection of desired heritable characteristics in order to improve future generations, and is often associated with Nazi Germany. But this this reporter was implying that the policy, not even any particular po like restrictions on children born into benefits just the fact that they were saying that it was it's not a good thing that we have so many kids born on a benefit because of what happens to them and that and they were calling that eugenicist based policy and then if you just go to the x twitter and then it says here uh, we don't speak only to sympathetic media. Uh, we just don't speak to media who believe we're eugenicists. Which is fair enough, right? And then we finish off with Chloe's, uh, Chloe's tweet. She gets stuck into it from the Green Party. She says, guys, they actually just asked if your policy to stop poor people having kids smacks of eugenics, doesn't it? And it has the definition there below. So, so what Chloe is trying to say is that their policy to stop poor people from having kids smacks of eugenics. So, mm. I just wanted to put it to you, Jade. Are you an, a eugenicist now? Because <laughs> I'm fairly certain that you're probably somebody who would say it's not the best idea to have a baby on the benefit i am happy to say myself that i don't think we should have kids on the benefit at all if it happens it happens but i think it's something you should try to avoid because if you really do love your kids you'd love to give everything you can for them and that would require earning additional income above a benefit because at the moment it would be very hard to do everything you can for a child while only earning income from the state so i'm just keen to hear your both of your thoughts about this because when i saw this unfold on twitter i was like i really got a bit concerned i was thinking am i a eugenicist am i a eugenicist now because i kind of get behind it a little bit because i would prefer a child to grow up in a household that was uh you know uh sufficiently resourced to, 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 to meet the needs of their children to, but does that make me a eugenicist? 
I'll be right with you, Simon. Um, I've, <laughs> I've, I've actually got a, I've actually got a like really clear answer on this. Okay. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just updating the uh, topic text. Be before I come back, so. <sighs> You, being on a benefit is not a physical trait. Right, that's what I thought. It's, it's not a, like it's not, it's not a physical trait. So you can't say, you can't say being. We don't want people on benefits having too many babies. You can't call that eugenics. It's not a physical trait to to be a beneficiary. It's a it's a social state. But it's not a physical state. So, I actually had that thought, Jade, and I and and I worked it out a little bit further, and I realised <laughs> it is eugenics because Chloe and the RNZ reporter are racist because only poor, the only poor people are black people, or that's to them, right? So, so technically, the benefit is and this policy is eugenics because they probably just assume all the poor people. Uh, minorities. Yeah, I mean, assumptions are fucked up, but I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this really clearly. I know tons of broke-ass white people. Mm -hmm. I know tons. And um, I, I think the only people making the correlation between coloured people and poor is the media. Absolutely. But when when I speak to people on a day to day, they they don't talk like that. That they, they dislike people on a person by person basis. Um, it's, a, it's not about a race. It's not about a religion. It's not about a social state. There's a, like there are reasons why people go on benefits. Simon, I'm I'm happy to say that I've been supported by benefits. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with them. They do have their time and place. It, it's just not a real thing. It's not eugenics. And on this one, I'm actually with the poor bugger. What's his name? I never remember his name. The leader. David Seymour. Yeah, I'm with the guy on this one. It's a, it's actually it's actually fair to want better for the community. To absolutely. To say to say to people, no, you're not going to use uh, children that didn't ask to be brought into the world as a financial treadmill for yourself. No. Yeah. Um. So, just to put my my take on this. So, for me to go back um, a few years now, but I was studying um, social work and how this relates was we were actually discussing beneficiaries and the thing was is that there were some beneficiaries that would end up having more um, mothers would end up having more babies to then get an extra few dollars keep and, the payments rolling and keep the payments rolling and then they wouldn't have to look for jobs and then it's also, it would be, um, they'd end up, I don't know, the term that we use also, um, some of them were generational um, beneficiaries. It just went through the, the years and the generations. Oh yeah, you just go on benefit, that's how it is. So I actually agree with that party. We need to actually get away from those who are on the benefit um, trying to have kids and actually think about ways that I think maybe one thing that isn't discussed and maybe why they're being so brutally um, taken across the, the coals for this is because because they're not in government right now they're not having any um, any stand to actually make a huge difference and so what I'm trying to say is 
that. He did make it in Parliament, though. He, he got the most seats ever in Parliament. Didn't he get five, Simon? I, I can't recall the exact number, but, but the, it's the most Max had for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is that we've got a government that is um, basically led by one party. Single majority, yeah. Single majority yep. and also um, the minister that uh, runs beneficiaries um, is in that party. Runs social welfare. She doesn't social welfare. run the people. Eh? Yeah, she, yeah. Doesn't, she doesn't run the people. Thank you for correcting yeah. me. So what I was saying was, uh, I think if there had been able to be, you know, if they'd have been able to flesh that, that out, they'd probably been able, would be able to actually communicate that clearly to, to Aotearoa that, no, we're not just trying to restrict you from having children, we're not trying to restrict you, we're actually trying to support you to have a better life and probably I bet they'd probably find a way to actually support people to help fight for jobs and get off benefits rather than being stuck. So Simon, you you didn't share your research uh, with me before this row and I understand why now because this is a really interesting topic. So what can you tell us about what X policy actually says because if you if you're going to suggest a reduction in one area sh surely there must be a plan for um for developments in another area such as people getting jobs i'm assuming um well they they've got employment insurance as they're proposing to replace a benefit uh let me just try and absorb something quickly uh, so income tax rates would remain unchanged, but 1% of tax paid would be allocated to a ring fence employment insurance fund. Uh, on loss of employment, a taxpayer can claim 50% of their average weekly earnings over the previous 52 weeks. The maximum yearly insurable earnings amount to 60k. I'm just going to throw that up on screen. Mm. Uh, is this it here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if, yeah, that's it right there. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean, so it, it seems like it's not too different to what is currently proposed, but there must be some uh, reason why it is. So this looks like, oh, an, go on then. I was just going to say, it looks like it's tied to um, your, 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 your work. So like, uh, this looks like it's... Um, this is if you haven't been working for the last year or so then you wouldn't really get any insurance because um it goes it, it you get paid out based on what you were paying or what you were earning and what was get what was getting taxed yeah so yeah so i'm mean, i'm not sure how that would work for somebody who's never had a job and um and and um, was looking to get some sort of support from the government Interesting. Uh, but, here I mean, you go. So, yeah. what what if you didn't qualify for the insurance? X policy mm. would make no changes uh, to the supported living payment, youth parent, youth payment, or orphans slash unsupported child benefits. Its changes are focused on the job seeker and sole parent uh, support benefits. Yeah, that clarifies a lot. Hmm. So there you go. No mention of, um, you know, increasing terminations or um, birth control for populations to uh, restrict their their birth rates. Just, just trying to say that people who aren't quite well off economically um, probably should uh, not be so keen on having babies. Just to play the other side of the coin here, though, Simon. Like, like I That's am, right. a, I am aware of the um, the the connection between, you know, benefits and more babies and things like that. But um, I am aware that in some cultures, uh, it's very normal to have 
lots of kids regardless unfortunately regardless of your uh, financial situation it's simply a, a cultural thing a, a sort of mechanism that hasn't fallen off from the days where we, we used to die of s simple infections you, you know having 15 well I know 15 is a bit on the extreme but you know, 10, 12 children for some Pacific Island families is not unheard of even to this day, for example. Yeah, there was 10 kids um, with my granddad, so it was him and nine <laughs> siblings. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've got a history of lots of siblings in, in my family. I've only got a couple of brothers, but, yeah, not far, far um, back. They, they were pumping out a few. It's a very Anglo-Saxon view to sort of look at your resources before before stocking your stocking your shelves of your family. Um, yeah, I happen to I happen to know lots of really big Pacific Island families, and you know I don't necessarily always have a view of the affordability, but. You, you know, you have a sense that they make do with what they have. Yeah, I mean, there's never going to be the perfect time to, um, the perfect time to have children, but there's definitely some factors you should consider first. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what next? Uh, this policy has been, been referred to as uh eugenics um dare i say that i understand that the welfare social welfare minister got rid of uh the policy requiring fathers to be named the, the yeah, something the, like that yeah yeah the previous government put it back in the current government got rid of it so so there's this firm belief well that covers off a few things doesn't it so one uh, have have as many babies as you like. The 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 drinks are on us, so to speak, mm. and also fathers fathers don't really matter. Is that your view, Simon? Wow. <laughs> well, this is not my personal view. I don't agree with it, but yeah, that's my view of what they uh, yeah. um, try <laughs> your, to your view really. on that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that the current government put it back in, that... Um, took it out. Took it out, sorry. I had no idea that they took it out because I think it's actually a really important thing. It, you know, women shouldn't be just going around. I'm talking as a woman. Going uh, around, lol. Going around, <laughs> just getting themselves pregnant to any Tom, Dick and Harry. Um, uh huh. you should do it. <laughs> They should actually be able to name who the the parent's father is, and a child should actually be brought into, you know, a two-parent home, even if they are separated. A, a child should know the parents, and it shouldn't be pushed away. And I think I've also heard on the other side of it too that. Um, some mothers have tried to do it um, in a positive, in a to benefit them by not naming the father. They see it that um, they right. can they can get a few extra more yep. few extra more dollars from the government. Yep. Because they're not certain on. Yep. On um. On child child support so get a few extra more dollars from the government which will be secure so don't name the father then it's yep. more likely you get a bit more money which is really sad Simon one, one conversation I'd like to have before we move on is um, what is your view as to why some people I'm not even going to say communities I was going to say communities I'm not going to do that what is your view on why some people feel more committed to the benefit than advancing themselves? It sounds like a second go at the question of the week. Mm. 
I, I think I think it just comes down to human nature. I just think it's the way we're hardwired that if there's something that's going to we perceive to take care of our needs, and you know be the easy option, well then we're always going. I think I then think it just the, that's the default mode of humans is to take that option and just to to, to take the easy way out. So I think that's why you, you see a lot of people that um, adapt their lifestyle to fit the benefit and then say that the benefit um, gives them everything they need kind of thing. You know what I mean? So they think they think that they that, that their, their, their lifestyle is set up and that the benefit provides all they need, but they've tricked themselves into thinking that, that this is the lifestyle they want because all they can be bothered to do maybe is just to, to, to be committed to that lifestyle yeah and um I, I wouldn't say there's anything easy about living on four hundred dollars a week in new zealand simon so no not so, at all so when people say to me oh they do it because it's the easiest i i struggle to get my head around that but what what's easy what's easy about four hundred dollars a week when you consider the price of some rents these days there's there's literally uh no room to buy necessities within that uh for me i see that as uh very much the wrong information that's being um circulated among um among individuals that then have this understanding that um that's the way to go go forward and I think they don't really see um, their child oh you know this is what you should do yep and they're not really told actually that how you can um, maintain and continue to betterment to provide betterment for yourself and your for, for your family yeah, you're absolutely right, Hannah. It is generational. Uh, I've seen it with my own eyes, not only in uh, situations very close to me, but um, friends as well. You just become convinced that this is the game you play and this is th this is how you survive. But mm -hmm. um, on, only through only through connecting yourself with people not in that space do you realise you can have a life that's not just about survival and i i don't agree um with the egg party leader on too many things i wa i wasn't a big fan of um the end of life truce bill for example the, yeah. the, like I, i'm not a fan of that and i'm happy to say that but on this i think he's right i i think i think young young people especially young women uh you, you know i consider anybody of birthing age to be quite young that's fair enough um you know they they deserve to aspire they deserve to achieve and, and the thing about success i mean simon and i have both had varying degrees of success it's not easy you you have you have some days that are real shit and you, and you wonder you wonder why you're doing what you're doing and, and you want that whole thing of imposter syndrome as well you're thrust into situations sometimes that you don't want to be in or don't believe you're capable of being in and and you just feel you feel vulnerable at times but what what i'd like to say to people that ask me for advice is if you're feeling uncomfortable, good. That that means you're growing. Yeah, no growth. They say no growth occurs inside your comfort zone, right? So it's always <laughs> in it's always in situations where you are unsure of yourself is where uh, yeah the, where the growth happens. Feel yeah. the fear and do it anyway, as they say. Yeah, and and like my my big thing. I know I'm going off on a bit of a ch tangent, but you know. What, what are live streams for? Uh, <laughs> let's let say, let's say, okay, let, let's say someone not on here is listening and whether now or on demand, 
they're listening and they go, yeah, but yeah, Jade, you don't get it. What if I fail? What if you fail? That That's the question. That's the question that people ask themselves in the wrong way wrong way what if you fail what what is actually the big deal if you mm. take a take a chance on a thing and you fail a little bit furthermore yeah, what, if? what if you succeed what if you exceed all expectations of what you thought was ever possible and, and you become like this big mogul in an industry that you're really passionate about and, and you don't even feel like you're working a day in your life because it's actually a passion and you're not even trying you're just doing it what if you succeed yes yeah, it's all a mindset and, and the and the last thing on this i got, I got a lot of views actually something about this um i only have a very high level understanding of the um, welfare system in america uh, but my general take, and I'm happy to be corrected, is that, is that it's extremely limited. I would say much more than the system in Aotearoa. What, what I find where, when I'm doing research for various things in my work and looking to connect with uh, like-minded colleagues overseas like America and Canada, uh, they're very entrepreneurial a and they seldom think about benefits and what they can get from the government that they're, they're very hard working disabled people like i know it's not easy there's challenges and people will always come back at me with the people on the fringes that i'm not speaking about yeah. but most disabled people around the world not all not all not, not all but most are very entrepreneurial and they get shit done because the government is simply not going to pick them up can i just add to that a little bit yeah sir? i can see you were going to try to go for it so um, just to add to that too is i definitely agree with what jade says i think the difference in mindset is because it's so little like um I know that there was a YouTuber that we were watching a while back and he was actually saying, you know, well, it's not even worth going for the benefit because there's so much hassle in it, so much you've got to prove. So that's one thing from their mindset. But the other side of it is they get, it's much, it's, in New Zealand, your benefit is means tested which makes sense because um, we just don't want to be giving free money out to but a lot of people are left with uh, little to nothing afterwards but my point being in raising that is going off what Jade said, it said is that people get benefits and then they use it to support them in an entrepreneurial way to grow, to develop, to actually make money and then they don't reapply for a benefit they don't reapply for that funding it's more like funding than a benefit and so what you're what you're trying to say if i unpack it is benefits are good if used for a short time is that what you're saying they can be useful and for a short time if yeah. if there's no other options um out there if you don't have support if you don't have um, ways of supporting yep. yourself but right. not to support a family but an individual yeah so Simon my, mind blowing mind blowing piece my mind blowing uh, discussion that you brought to the show and for the last episode of the year too you pull out you pull out the eugenics so yeah. l love it bro love it thank you so much i had to, I had to keep you on your toes so hopefully <laughs> i delivered no, no you really did you you i will say this i wrecked my mind for a good two or three days like what is this mother gonna gonna bring on the show man I was trying to figure it out so bad, but I loved it, Simon. 
Uh, thank you, and I'm sure the viewers at home uh, loved it as well. I've got a story now, too, if you don't mind. Go ahead, mate. Share it with the group. Um, so, um, so here we go. Juicy Smollett. Juicy Smollett co convicted <laughs> of <laughs> staging an attack. And lying to police. Now, I know I was saying that wrong. It wasn't just a black guy moment. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it how it's spelled. Uh, he was convicted on four charges of lying to police, Simon. Acquitted yeah. of, a, acquitted of a fifth, I believe it says there. Oh, really? I wonder what he was acquitted on, because he definitely seemed like he... Um, <laughs> he, he should have been guilty of all of them. I don't know. I'd be interested to know what he wasn't um, found guilty on. But actually, but... it's worse than that. The jury found yeah. the thirty-nine-year-old guilty on five counts of disorderly conduct. Uh, one for each time he was charged for lying to police. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot! I. As soon as I saw the video of the police come into the room and he's still got the noose around his neck, I knew this was all bullshit. Like, no. And, he, and the cop immediately goes, why have you still got that thing on? <laughs> and, and he goes, oh, I wanted you to make sure you I wanted to make sure you guys saw it. <laughs> and I thought, that sounds like somebody who's, who's put that around their own neck. <laughs> So, so in case you forgot, uh, this guy uh, paid um, two black men. Now, now, the reason I say it like that is it's very important because uh, Juicy Smollett tried to say that the attack was racially motivated. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, mm -hmm. don't, if you don't remember yeah. that it was racially motivated, and the two black men. Uh, th this is not from the article, but from um, my understandings prior, that the two black men referred to his neighborhood in Chicago as mega, mega country, which doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. It's not even a thing. They're wearing mega hats. And mega hats. These two mm. black men. Mega. In Chicago in winter at 3 a.m., the the two brothers were paid thirty five hundred dollars in total, so so a very cheap night out in terms of what he was trying to achieve here. Um, but um, Juicy uh, referred to these men as liars, and that the money was provided to them uh, for meal and workout planning. <laughs> the, the old, I'll pay you for a couple of meals and workout plans if you go and pretend to beat me up and put a noose around my neck. <laughs> and Jimmy. and pretend to be a racist because, you know, yeah. we're literally the same race, but whatever. Yeah. You'd be one of those white racist black guys. Um, It goes on to say here that the damage to his personal and professional professional life may be more severe. Uh, Juicy lost his role on the TV program Empire after prosecutors said the alleged attack was a hoax and he told jurors this week, I've lost my livelihood. You certainly have, mate. And Look, you probably just, deserve it. <laughs> can I just confirm with you, did this all happen because he didn't get a raise? Yeah. And they were trying, he was yep. trying to say, oh, well, I'm black and... I need some drama so I can get free publicity and get a raise. And they didn't give me a raise because I'm black. Yeah, so no, that's yeah. literally what happened. He asked yeah. for a raise and he didn't get a... His lifestyle was getting out of hand. Um, and yeah, yeah, I remember that from last year. Yeah. But th this is just a recap, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a juicy... <laughs> Never got away with it. Great. He 
as we Never say once. <laughs> he, as we say in New Zealand, fucked up. <laughs> Oh, I can never get these thingies right. One second. Oh, that's because I turned mine off. <laughs> yep. Got it. Simon, why do people lie to get attention? Oh, uh, well, because... That attention just feels so good to them that they'll do, they'll justify whatever it takes to get that attention. Well, some people just can't can't take, um, I guess, the truth. So they'll do whatever it takes to 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 further a lie. What is the mental process you have to go through to say to yourself, okay? I didn't get a raise, so I'm going to go outside in the snow, I'm going to pay two dudes $3,500 to say that they attacked me, but we all know they didn't, so I can maybe get that raise. <laughs> like, where, where does your mind go to get to that place? I don't know, like, the, the Hollywood, the Hollywood mindset must be so poisonous that that's considered a, an, an okay action. You know, like, outside of the acting world, that, that action that he did is just so bonkers, right? Like, outside of his work and his life, what he did is just beyond stupid, but to him, his life is so important that he decided to pay someone to help him fake a hate crime because it would further his own agenda. And, and it, like, is it the fact that um, America is just so race-based that he honestly thought that people would skip over the very clear fact that he teamed up with attackers that were known to him and also happened to be black. Is America that race based that he genuinely thought they would skip over that? I mean, he wasn't just known to them. It's come out that they what masturbated <laughs> together and they took drugs and stuff. So they were qu quite close acquaintances. Can't say I've done that. No, neither. No. Nah. That, that's pretty deep. Hene, oh, great article. Yeah, yeah. Hannah, any final thoughts about Juicy before, before we move on? I'm just so glad that he's been convicted. Um, mm -hmm. It came out and people were questioning. I remember people saying, oh, no, what's going to happen to Empire? Poor Juicy. Poor Juicy. Oh, what's going to happen to Empire? And then, mm. oh... And then, really, we find out the truth. We start hearing yeah. pin and patters, and then we start hearing the truth. And I'm just so glad that he's actually been convicted for all his lies. And Oh, the article does, does say, though, he's unlikely to serve time. He's going to be on probation and need, need to fulfill a quota of community service hours. So, unfortunately, justice will not genuinely be served on this but one thing i feel though okay he may not genuinely genuinely serve time but i feel that this has probably um affected his reputation him oh also. he's never gonna work anywhere again if, if he does any movie it's gonna be on pornhub i promise you that <laughs> Yeah, he's a bit tainted at the moment. He's bad you <laughs> Nobody will want to touch him. Yeah. Nobody wants the juice anymore from Juicy. Yeah. No, the juju juicy. <laughs> juicy juju. Okay, so moving right along, we did promise <laughs> um, that, that it wasn't going to be all about COVID, but I do have uh, one more story before Hannah sends us out for 
2021. I'm feeling very emotional about this, but um. Should you get two stories, Jade? Am I not allowed one? Oh well, yeah, of course. Oh, that, this is a good one though. Hopefully, you hopefully you haven't seen this one. Ge genuinely, genuinely hope you like it. Um. Yeah. No, so man receives <laughs> ten vaccines in one day. I've heard of this, but I want, I really want to know how true this is. Like, how, how confirmed is this? Because this is just so bizarre. No, this is, a, this is real. This is being confirmed by the Ministry of Health. So this <sighs> man, this, this man was paid to receive, um, COVID vaccines on behalf of people that obviously didn't want it. Um, and they were trying to get their vax passes in an alternative way. Um, the Ministry of Health says right here that they are very... We are taking this matter very seriously, and we are very concerned about the situation, and are working with the appropriate authorities. Um, Auckland University Professor Nikki Turner... Uh, says there was no data on the safety of receiving that many vaccines in one day. Oh, I wonder yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just skip over the fact that one can be somewhat dangerous. Um, the vaccine we're using is designed based on early clinical data uh, that works out the right amount to give a good immune response and to get, give a good safety profile and we do know that a high dose of the vaccine can create more side effects this is not a safe thing to do this puts that person at risk um so yeah the, this whole story is about one dude being investigated for being a trooper basically does it what does that help or hurt the vaccine program being able to take 10 vaccines to the arm in one day does that make does that is that a positive for the vaccine rollout or does that uh, does this um help reinforce the, the hesitant or skeptic people Ooh, i see what you're saying there simon um it could do both it could do both it genuinely depends what camp you're in but because now now you can hear all the liberals saying see see he took 10 nothing happened to him mm. yeah i can i can see how that works out but the um, counter argument is see he took 10 <laughs> look what happened to him <laughs> nothing are you sure it's worth actually taking those vaccines when they're not really doing much to you. But as as they also as she also said that um, you know they go basing off early clinical knowledge, um, trial knowledge. They don't have long term data of how it affects you over several years. How does it you know what are the long term effects for him for also taking to that many vaccines. There's, and, there's no such thing as long-term data. Yeah, no, I'm saying there's no long-term data, so, but really, that could really affect him in the long term also, if it's not affecting him today. And the other thing I was going to say, too, is, uh, was he really, he must have really been ne needing money. <laughs> <laughs> what drove him to do that otherwise? I mean, again, I asked the question again, where, how do you, Get to the place where you think that's a good idea. Where on earth did this guy find clients? Like, how did he jack that up? It's just amazing. Why do I always miss out on meeting these kind of people, Simon? Yeah, man, I know they must hang out in <laughs> part of the country, but yeah, this is a very special individual who took took an advantage of a unique opportunity in the market to um, to provide a service to people. <laughs> uh, I wonder how much money he made. Yeah, I hope he doesn't get jail time for this as well. Not knowing the government, like, is it possible they'd want to make an example out of him? 
totally. They might just swap a giant fine on him or something, half a year in the prison or something. Half a year? You talk like that's easy to do. It's not at all, but like people can perceive that as a as a short prison sentence. But I'd also be questioning. Uh, so, you're gonna just put this person with punishment? Well, actually, what about all the individuals he did it for? Shouldn't they be getting sent fines? Yeah, yeah. It, it shouldn't actually be him getting in trouble. Do you think well, so? I just think the other people probably should um, take responsibility for their part in the transaction as well. Yeah, I, I don't know definitely. if it should be an either or. or. Maybe they yeah. should all get some sort of punishment. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I completely agree. I with think you. I, <laughs> I think it's just kind of funny, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's Kiwi ingenuity if I ever saw it. Kiwi ingenuity right there, and I've just noticed my my tabs have changed. Bear with me one sec. Yeah, don't go changing on me. I I tell you when to change. But mm -hmm. Hannah, uh, you've got the last one. For, Some marshmallow. For 2021, you've got our marshmallow story, so we can we can go to bed with our brains fried and nullified from all the social damage that's occurring in the world what have you got for us today hannah so i'm going to be talking about um taylor's road so everybody out franklin road franklin road yeah. everybody outside of road. everybody outside of auckland uh franklin road is known for um its lights display yearly lights display now it's been doing this for 26 years um and it's known to, for about 10,000 for over december to bring 10,000 people to to the street and what they try and say is it, this that run by community and they do get a little bit of funding but um the point being is it's run by community and they actually highlight it's a free thing that you can do and when it's a very expensive time but get to the yeah. drama what's wrong with it so they have decided for the second year in a row they're going to cancel it because oh, of the traffic lights oh simon no franklin road because no. of the traffic light system they've really thought well, we can't really guarantee less than 25 people. We can't guarantee that. Garen, and how are people really going to be scanning in to Franklin Road? Um, so there was a lot of people in this article um, actually saying, one lady I love what she said, she actually said, I was really looking forward to my, my display for, for the first time forever. I was going to do a centre peeing off the side of the roof. No, but no, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hannah, help me with this one. So, what's stopping you from putting lights up on your house? What do they mean? Exactly. Franklin Road is cancelled. I'm really struggling with this one. So, the <laughs> community has decided. The street has decided because. Franklin Road has brought, it brings about, as I said, estimated, an estimated amount of 10,000 people per year um, to the street. So if they, if, if they went ahead with, with it, they'd bring a lot, you'd, they would then bring a large amount of people to that street and they could, they actually say, we do not feel risk comfortable being responsible for COVID-19 and people not Man, um, people have weird framing of responsibility not um, then being able to contact trace and how would we be able to work this out so basically they're saying because it's Franklin Road people would come here if there was any lights up and then the, it would just start spiralling 
No one ever spoke that way about the flu, Simon. Like, if you got the flu attending Franklin Road, people would just go, oh, yeah, it was pretty cold that day, eh? Like, like, <laughs> yeah, that's how you got, like, influenza. I mean, you obviously got it through contact, but you, you never heard of people cancelling events. No, well, I guess we're dealing with something that's just that much more deadly than the flu that we can't we can't have that sort of response. But I mean, some people say that's not the case. But yeah, I mean, what's going to what would happen? Would would all those homes just put up all those lights and then would the police come around and bash the public if there was too many people standing on the footpath? That's what I'm trying to say, Hannah. Like, so, what if they just did it anyway? So that that's what I'm actually trying to get to. Um, it actually highlights an article that um, the council has not asked for this to be cancelled. This was not done on their recommendation to cancel it. This was done from the neighbourhood um, community decision. It's been a decision of the neighbourhood, and that what is why that it's not going. Mean? I bet it was the loser who's lived in, on Franklin Road for ages and has never done any lights for their house and has gone, "Yes, this is my chance. I'm going to cancel this stuff for good," and he's make up a lie about how concern they are about all those people coming to look at the lights and they just don't want to run the risk in the end there. and they actually do actually talk about an individual who wants to remain anonymous that how he's glad that it's not they're glad that it's not on because of what it it does every year the crime and how it affects uh, people accessing the street. So he said, yeah, I'm really glad that it's not on. Oh, that, that's right. You said that people were getting broken into. Uh, he said one year that um, one house got broken into and then and another thing that they were saying is nails were being hammered into tyres. Yeah. That is so random, but uh, I guess that's what you get when you live on one of New Zealand's most famous streets. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I figured out that um, Auckland Council, the council actually provides um, the street $7,000 for that period when, um, when is it is. Is that like, all? That doesn't even cover security. No, just, just if I continue. That basically just um, adds managers uh, for rubbish bins and things like that, and <laughs> so people don't take huge dumps on the street either. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so the big thing is uh, the guy who actually started it. He said, "We don't actually want any more funding. We're not looking for any more funding, and we don't want to be sponsored by anyone because we don't want it to turn into a commercial." commercial um, event because we want this to be a free thing for families to be able to do so and no. then they're going and cancelling your game awesome, awesome Hannah so I can't get it I can't get my beard shaved off at any um, hairdresser because they don't want me to take my mask off and also now I can't um, go look at the Franklin Road lights. This was going to be my first year because I've got my license now, see. Oh, uh, you know what, too, that the verse said? Oh, well, it, you know, the alternative, it's really good that the sky, that um, Auckland Harbour Bridge has lit up with the Christmas colours. It's really good. That was the end of the article I was saying. Um, no. Um, Anarchist wants me to keep the beard. Um, I, I must say it's growing with, with, with a bit of, you, you, you know, it's, ve it's very, it's very full now. It's starting to really full out. So, so, so I do kind of like that. Anarchist, so great to see you. 
near the end of the show. We're actually just about uh, to move into final thoughts. Simon, what a year, what a podcast series. Uh, we've been through a rebrand. Um, we've, we've almost aced the format of what we do here. Um, I, we don't have to start with you, but I was going to offer you the floor. Yeah, well, I guess I'll, I'll take it. Um, here's to, uh, interesting 2021. Um, we've talked about a wide range of topics that it, it feels like on the uh, Here's What We Know podcast, so that's actually <coughs> something to reflect on and think uh, positively about, just the um, the fact that we haven't stuck within one aspect of, of um, content. So, I mean, it's, it's always been nice being able to come on this podcast and be able to just have big, long, open conversations and just to explore mm. things. So it's been, I think it's been... Uh, you know some of the best content we've ever made so I, th- I think we should all be you know, yeah. pretty stoked with uh, the stuff we've done this year and uh, looking forward to, to what comes up in uh, 2022 uh, but looking forward to a break man just hanging out for some days off that's for sure yeah if I can just stay with you for two more seconds Simon can you give us a sense of one highlight for 2021 that or maybe start with a low light and then um, your highlight for 2021. Hmm. Low light, August 17th, <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Um, and highlight. Mm. I couldn't really pinpoint which one, but a couple of couple of uh of uh, surf sessions here and there have been pretty high um awesome, on the man. year so yeah i would say one of those would definitely be a highlight for me mm. awesome. well, the, the highlight mm. and uh we'll come now to hannah how, how would you speak on uh your 2021 and sitting here while me and simon uh comment on world affairs I feel like uh, 2021 has been politically a roller coaster that's caused. Yeah, that's cool. I like how you said that. That's caused individuals in the community a lot of confusion, a lot of um, individuals not being sure of themselves. And I think a lot of people just want to be, want to work, want to have great great ways and so that's been a huge low light for me um I'm oh just, you mean with the mandates i'm just over it and i'm over yeah. the government i'm i'm over how that they've brought in mandates and um that was really a low light. i really thought that it was going to go away i really thought okay yep we can get rid of this that's fine and um, a big thing for us, you know, we looked at um, suddenly, finally, our disability um, system is going to be changing and I feel like what's gone and happened is completely contradicted what they announced, you know, choice and control of an individual's life, whereas it's completely con- contradicted by mandates by saying no you don't get a choice ah, i see where you're going there yep yep you don't get yep. a choice of your worker you don't get a choice mm. of what you want in your life if you if you don't if you want somebody who's not vaccinated you can't have it so that was a low light for me and a highlight um i've had a few a few highlights here and there and and some some of those times have just been, um, you know, spending time with you, Jay. So thank you. Sure. But I've really enjoyed um, the Here Is What We What We Know po- podcast. And thank you, Simon. Um, I've had had a lot of great times, and I've I agree, Simon. It's been great just be able to be able to have these conversations in wide ranging topics. 
Did I hear that you're working on your own show, possibly piloting in 2022? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so we'll look out. We'll look out for that one. Uh, for me, well, a major. I'll go with a highlight first before I, before I give my commentary on the year. Major highlight for me uh, was last week when we had Simon over for dinner. I thoroughly enjoyed watching him sweat over his spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but in all seriousness, Simon, um, I I really don't want to understate um, how important uh, you, our friendship has been to me over this year in terms of in terms of lowlights. Um, there's been plenty. Uh, both professionally and personally, there, there's been a there's been a lot going on which I'm not really prepared to talk about in um, content just yet, but that may change. So, so Simon, to to be able to work with you on this project, uh, to have you as a mate in general has been, has been really awesome for me. I've had a lot of, a lot of feedback offline, not so much in the chat from people New Zealand based uh, that have been watching this show and I've kind of alluded to this uh, over the course of the series but never never been straight up with Simon a lot of people really uh, watch the show they get a lot of value out of it but they're not too sure like how to comment or how to take part um, so, so something for us to take into the new year is to think about how to facilitate uh, engagement in the chat a bit more because at, at least on the Kiwi point of view, I think people are a bit scared to convers <laughs> conversate with us, Simon. But but I'd just like to say that there, there are no wrong answers and I, I think if you've watched this, uh, series in totality, you'll find that we don't vilify people at all. Uh, we we embrace all perspectives. Yeah, we are in the we are relentless in the pursuit of free expression of ideas. Right, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, and um, I just want to say to the fair familiar too. Um, for those of you that watch the show, whether uh, you, you know on the stream like anarchist or later later on like many others just thank you like like it's not to be understated like the fact you even watch this at all is like super super cool um and simon and i we didn't really set targets about what we wanted to achieve around this but at least from my perspective uh, for 2022, I would I would like to build it out and and see how far we can push the boat. So, uh, thank you, thank you for being part of the the journey, really, and thank you for even believing that the thoughts uh, that Simon and I have are worth listening to. But I think I'm going to wrap now. Uh, it's been a mind blowing year. It's been a mind blowing podcast series uh it's sometimes a little bit uh challenging to juggle between professional and personal things going on for simon and i both but i can't say it enough we we appreciate everybody at home for listening to this so i'm gonna stop rambling and say thank you for being a part of the channel Thank you for being a part of the journey. Please stay awesome and all together. We'll, we'll see, you, see you all in the, the next, next one. one. Can I just say one thing? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, oh, of Merry course. Christmas. Merry Peace Christmas out. and a happy new year. Love you guys. <laughs>